Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, we will continue with the discussion of development of calculus in India. The earlier discussion was actually something like a pre-calculus, the preparation for calculus or what Bhaskara called as Bijopayogi for algebra. Similarly, now we will straight away go into the results derived by Madhava. So, first is the Madhava series for pi. So, the following verses of Madhava are cited both in Yukti Bhasha and Kriya Kramakari. Vyase, Varithi Nihate, Rupa Hrite, Vyasa Sagar Abhihate, Tri Sharadi Vishama Sankhya Bhaktam, Rinam Swam Prithak Kramat Kuryat. So, just this verse will tell you this relation that the circumference is 4 times the diameter multiplied by 1 minus 1 by 3, 3 shara shara is 5 plus 1 by 5, 3 shara di vishama sankhya, the odd numbers bhaktam divided, rinam swam that is both negative and positive, prithak kramat kurya go on doing it. So, that is the infinite series for 5 by 4, what later on was rediscovered by Leibniz. 1674. <coughs> the other verses of Madhava have to do with the end correction term, we will come to it later. So, this is the first result by Madhava. Then Madhava also gave the relation between the arc and the card or the arc as the, uh, and the jia and the kojia and the arc. So, this is the relation which is again cited in Kriya Kramakari and in Yukti Bhasha. Ishtajya trijya yor ghatat kotyaptam prathamam phalam. So, let us first see the result. So, jya multiplied by koti. So, jya is r sign, koti is r cosine. So, the ratio is the tangent of the arc. So, this series essentially is the what is called the tan inverse x series or called the Gregory's series today. The verse of Madhava. So, Ishtajya trijya yor ghatate koti aptam prathamam palam. So, the first term is the ratio of the jya by koti. Jya vargam gunakam kritva koti vargam chaharakam making sin squared by cos squared as the multiplier and the divisor obtain the successive terms prathamadi palebhyo athaneya phalatatir mohu. That way obtain all the successive terms. Ekatriyadi hoja sankhya bhi bhakteshu yeteshu anukramat from the odd terms which are obtained this way. Ojanam samyutes tyaktva yugma yogam dhanur bhavet. So, subtracting the odd from the even, the rest will become the dhanu that is the arc, uh, that is become the, uh, this is the chapa, so that is the card. Doh kot yor alpame veshtam kalpaniyam iha smritam. So, dhanu is actually the chapa. Doh kot yor alpame veshtam kalpaniyam iha smritam. So, between the Jya and the koti, you have to think of the smaller one. So, in the first quadrant, it is sign by cos. Otherwise, labdi naam avasanam syat na anyathapi muhur muhu. So, unless you take the smaller one as the numerator and the larger one as the denominator, you will never have the terms, successive terms becoming smaller and smaller. So, that is how this is called the chapi karana verse. So, the jya has been converted to a chapa. You know the jya, from the jya, you know the koti. So, the ratio you take and this series will give you the chapa or dhanu associated with the given jya. So, this is the Gregory series, this is the other result of Madhava. Next, the third result is the result when you take the one twelfth of the diameter as the arc or the angle is 30 degrees, then sin is half, cosine is root 3 by 2. Therefore, the tan square 
is 1 by 3 of 30 degrees. So, you obtain a series for the chapa in terms of, so you are considering tan inverse of pi by 6, this series. <coughs> So, it is since tan squared is 1 by 3, you have 1 minus 1 by 3 into 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 whole squared etcetera, etcetera. So, the relation between the circumference and the diameter is best expressed. This is a series which is somewhat faster converging than the Leibniz series. You can see 3, 3 squared, 3 cubed appearing here. The Leibniz series was somewhat slow 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth. So, this series was later on rediscovered by Abraham Sharp. In fact, it is one of those series which led to evaluation of pi to uh, 100 decimal places, I think towards the end of 17th century. So, the words of Madhava, Vyasa Vargat, Ravi Hatha, Ravi is Dvadasha Aditya 12, Padam Syat Prathamam Palam. So, the square of the diameter multiplied by 12, the square root of that is the first term. Tadaditaha, trisankhyaptam, phalam syat, uttarottaram. The further terms are successively divided by one third. The other odd terms, etcetera, also appear in the same way as before. So, these three series were enunciated by Madhava, but Madhava also enunciated a certain way of uh, calculating using these series. The series themselves are not of much use for calculation. The Madhava series, so if you write it this way, where p are the successive odd terms, this is an extremely slow convergent series. Even if you take 50 terms in this series, it will give the value of pi correct only to the first decimal place, that is 3.1 you can obtain. So, Madhava has given a procedure. So, what Madhava is saying is add a correction term like this after some odd term, whatever odd term that you want, you sum it up up to 1 over 273 or whatever, then put a correction term. Obviously, the correction dip term depends upon the p value. The verses of Madhava that we first quoted, where the pi series, uh, pi by 4 series is enunciated that verse itself gives you the correction term that Madhava proposed. So, yat sankhyaya atra harane krite nivritta hritis tu jamitaya. So, by going on successively dividing by the odd numbers, if you really get bored after some time, so when you get tired or bored, jamitaya nivritta hriti, then take the following correction after that immediately. So, once you get tired after dividing and summing these terms, whichever point you feel like, you then do the following correction. So, what is he saying? The correction term proposed by Madhava is p plus 1 by 2 divided by p plus 1 whole square plus 1, let us see from the verbs. Tasya urdhvagataya samasankhya, that is p plus 1 tad dalam half of that guno ante syat. So, that will be the multiplier tad vargo p plus 1 whole square rupa yuto added with 1 that will be the hara that will be the divider divisor vyasa abdi ghatata pragvat the diameter is a multiplier as before tabhyam aptam swam rine krite dhane chepa eva karaniya. So, you add it or subtract it depending on the place in which you are there in the series labdhaha paridhi sukshmo in fact, the resultant value is quite accurate, much more accurate than summing that series for many, 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 many more terms. That is the, the Leibniz series or the just the base Madhava series. If you go on summing it for 100, 200 terms, not much advantage can be obtained. Using this correction term will give you much better results soon enough. So, the first correction term that Madhava proposed was minus 1 to the power p plus 1 by 2 p plus 1 by 2, p plus 1 whole square plus 1, this is the. There is also a 0th order correction, which was not stated by Madhava. We will see later on while analyzing this correction. Pardon me? This is for any p. You go on, stop at whatever p when you feel tired, put this correction. 
you will get a result which is much better than going and summing many, 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 many more terms in the series. That is what he is saying. Then later on, another verse of Madhava is quoted and this said to be a Sukshmatara better correction. Ante samasankhya dalavargaha saiko gunaha sa eva punaha. So, samasankhya is p plus 1, the end even number, p is the last odd number. Samasankhya dala, that is half of it, vargaha square of it, saiko multiplying, uh, adding 1 to it, that is the guna, that is the numerator. Yuga, yuga gunito rupa yutaha, <coughs> multiplying it by 4 times, adding 1 to it, samasankhya dala hato. <coughs> p plus 1 by 2, dividing it by p plus 1 by 2, bhavet haraha, that will become the divisor. So, simplification will give you p plus 1 whole square plus phi in the denominator. So, this is called uh, the more accurate correction of Madhava. The Shankar warrior in uh, Kriya Kramakari says, this is a sukshma tara, this is the much more accurate, much more final correction term due to Madhava. So, how does this help? In fact, if you go and calculate uh, 50 terms, that is up to p is equal to 99, using the just this correction, the correction of Madhava, then you will obtain the following value which is attributed to Madhava. So, this verse appear in, appears in the Aryabhatiya Bhashya Nilakanta Somiyaji saying that the following verse was given by Madhava for an accurate value of pi. Vibudha Netra Gajahi Hutashana. Triguna Veda, Bhavarana, Bahavaha, Nava Nikarva Mite, Vriti Vistare, Paridhi Mana Midam, Jagaduhu, Budhaha. The wise say that the following is the uh, circumference of a circle of diameter Nava Nikarva. 9 into Nikarva is 10 to the power 11. So, a circle with diameter 9 into 10 to the power 11. The following is the circumference. What is it? Vibudha. Vibudha is the number of devas 33. Netra is number of eyes 2. Gaja is Ashtagaja, 8. Ahi is fires, uh, the elephants, uh, serpents, that is 8. Hutashana is fire, 3. 3 is 3 itself. Guna is Triguna, again 3. Veda is 4. Bha is Nakshatras, 27. Varana is again Gaja, 8. Bahava is the arms, 2. So, Vibhudha Netra Gaja hi Hutashana. Triguna Veda, Bhavarana, Bahava, that is this number 28274333, So, this value of pi accurate up to 11 decimal places was given by Madhava. Now, both Yukti Bhasha and Kriya Kramakari not only give the end correction term, they also tell you the derivation of them. They will give you an argument by which this p plus 1 by 2 by p plus 1 square plus 1 or the more accurate correction of Madhava were obtained. So, if you carry out that procedure further and further, you will see that actually that end correction term can be expressed in terms of what we saw in one of the earlier lectures, the old familiar object a continued fraction. There is this story of uh, Mahalanabis going to Ramanujan and giving him a problem, something he read in the newspaper that day and Ramanujan gave an answer. So, then Mahalanabis asked, how did you find out? Ramanujan said, obviously, uh, this problem involved a continued fraction. So, that is how I think uh, Madhava is also one of those persons, I think, who thinks in terms of continued fractions naturally. So, it is 1 by 2 p plus 2 plus 2 squared by 2 p plus 2 plus 4 squared by 2 p plus 2. So, 1 by 2 p plus 2 is just the lowest order correction, which we have not mentioned at all. 1 by 2 p plus 2 plus 4 by 2 p plus 2 is the first correction of Madhava. This correction is given by 1 over 2 p plus 2 plus 4 over 2 p plus 2. This is the third order correction. 4 squared over 2 p plus 2 is the this correction. So, the next order correction will be 6 squared over 2 p plus 2, which is not mentioned in Kriyakramakari, but if you follow the same method, this is what you will get. So, today we can do, we can do a tabulation. So, we can write down the Madhava series 1 minus 1 by 3, put the correction term and find out uh, what will be the accuracy of pi in number of decimal places. Say, if you go 50 terms in the series. So, if you put no correction terms, as I said, only one decimal place will be accurate. You have one correction term, 5 decimal places, two correction, the second order correction term it gives you 8. Third order, first order is 1 over 2 p plus 2, that is not uh, stated in the book. Second order is the first correction given by Madhava. This is the correction which Madhava said is fairly accurate. That gives you pi to 11 decimal places, if you go 50 terms in the series. 
So, if you use the next and the higher order correction, you will get 17 decimal places. Interestingly, Sadratna Mala of Shankaravarman gives the following value of pi correctly to 17 decimal places. Now, so now that we have an expression per AP, right, we plug it in here. Now that we have a continued fraction for 1 by AP, we just plug it in here, then C minus a sum of finite terms in the Madhava series is equal to a continued fraction. Now, instead of going a sum of finite series, you just take the first term only and put in the continued fraction, then you will get what we can call as the Madhava continued fraction. So, from that series, you can immediately go, once you have the correction terms written as a continued fraction, we have a continued fraction. And just for comparison, I think in 1656, again Lord or Viscount Bronker, whose name is already familiar to us in the context of the Varga Prakriti or the Pell's equation, he gave uh, this uh, continued fraction. Wallis had an infinite product, which Lord Bronker converted into a continued fraction. In fact, uh, okay. now, having given the correction terms, Madhava found a simple way in which the series itself can be transformed to appear like a more faster convergent series. Once you have these correction terms, you can use it and convert the series itself. So, that is the next thing. So, having done the correction term, so basically this is a way of rewriting the series itself. This is how Yukti Bhasha starts explaining. 4D into 1 minus A1, A1 is the correction term plus A1, they are cancelling, plus A3 will cancel with minus A3. 1 minus 1 by 3 will remain, plus A 5, it will cancel with minus A 5 in the next term, minus into minus plus 1 by 5 will remain. So, this is only the original series, only you have interpolated the correction terms in between and you are going to transform the terms of the series by doing this. So, it is like writing an infinite series. So, you so you have 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth. So, all that you do is put something here. which will all cancel out and regroup the terms. Put few things here, which will all cancel out and regroup the terms. You will get a different series. Now, the thing that you put in, that is where the cleverness comes. Those uh, correction terms are the best things to be put in, because that is what will transform the series into a faster convergent series. So, this correction divisor 2 p plus 2, which we did not use at all, that is the lowest order correction term. That is to this series after 1 by p, you just say minus 1 to the power p plus 2, 1 over 2 p plus 2, that is the simplest correction term. Madhava's correction term was more complicated, Madhava's second correction term is even more. So, if you use just this 2 p plus 2 and plug it in here for 1 over a 1, 2 into 1 plus 2, for 1 over a 3, 2 into 3 plus 2. So, put it in and go on. Then what you get? You get a series like this. And this series was expressed by Madhava this way. Vyasat Vadidi Nihatat Prutagaptam Triadi Ayug Vimula Ghanaihi Trigna Vyase Swam Rinam Kamashakritva Paridhi Aneha. So, Triadi 3 etcetera Ayug odd numbers Vimula Ghanaihi 3 cube minus 3 Ghana of which the root is subtracted. So, those are the successive terms. So, here as you can see, while the Madhava series goes like odd numbers in the denominator, here this series is going like cubes of odd terms in the denominator. Obviously, it is faster converging. And this has taken into account the lowest order correction term 2 p plus 2. Now, you put instead of 2 p plus 2, anyway before that there is another transformation that you can do and that transformation is done in this Karana Padhati, one of the later works on the astronomy. So, there in Karana Padhati, it is observed that these two terms can be grouped in this way. The successive odd cubed minus the root. So, 4 n minus 1 cubed and 4 n plus 1 cubed minus 4 n plus 1, this can be simplified this way. Then what happens? You are going to get a series which involves the fourth power of successive even numbers. So, it is even more faster converging. So, that is the next transformation. Vargaihi yujamba dvigunaihi nirekaihi vargi kritaihi varjita yugma vargaihi. So, 2, 4, etcetera squared 
multiplied by 2 and minus 1 squared once again and subtract the square of the number again. Vyasancha shadgnam 6 d vibhajet palam swam vyasayet rinigne paridhis tathasya. This is the verse in Karana Padhati, which is giving you the series where the successive fourth power of the successive terms appear. Now, let us put the first correction stated by Madhava as one as a p. If you do that, you are going to get fifth powers of successive odd terms as the in this series. So, that is even more faster convergent. So, that is what is happening. So, if you take 1 by a p to be uh, a p to be this and then plug it in in this formula for the transformed series, what you are going to get is this c is 4 d into 1 minus 1 by 5 minus 16 d 1 over 3 to the power 5 plus 4 into 3 minus 1 over 5 to the power 5 plus 4 into 5. Sama pancha hatayo ya rupa di ayujam chaturghna mula yutaha. So, same thing fifth power minus 4 times the mula and these terms tabhi shoda shagunitat vyasat pruta gahrateshu vishama yute sama phala yuti mapahaya syat ishta vyasa sambhavaha paridihi or given the given diameter this will be the circumference. So, this goes like fifth power of odd numbers. So, much better convergent than the previous one. Now, we go to the second correction divisor of Madhava, what he called as the Sukshma uh, uh, correction. Uh, Kriya Kamarikiri and Yukti Bhasha do not mention what is the series that we get. So, but now we can write down what it is. So, we just put that one by a p, then we see we get a series which essentially goes like the seventh power of the odd numbers, which is equivalent to seventh power of the odd numbers. So, if you put them each term will go like this 3 cube minus 3, 2 square plus 5, 4 square plus 5, 5 cube minus 5, 4 square plus 5, 6 square plus 5, etcetera, etcetera. So, this is how the series goes. Now, the beauty of this uh, Madhava's transfer, pardon me? This AP is Madhava's AP, two corrections. We will we'll, we'll go back through the whole thing once again. You see, Madhava has given two corrections. These are the two corrections given by Madhava. This will give you the fifth power, this will give you the seventh power. This is the seventh power. This one, this is this correction term or this transformation series is not given in Yukti Basha or Kriya Kramakari. This one is given, this is giving you that. Uh, uh, the 4 uh, plus uh, 3 to the power 5 plus 4 into 3. The 1 over 2 p plus 2 which was not given by Madhava that the 0th order correction that will give you the 3 cube minus 3, 5 cube minus 5. This is the 7th power. The Madhava correction actually corresponds to the 7th power. So, the beauty of this kind of transformation. So, we are using this divisor, the third order divisor of Madhava and that will give you the 7th powers. But the beauty of that series is you can put even divisors which are not these end correction terms. Even then it will give you a good transformed series. So, some of these examples are mentioned in Kriya Kramakari. So, you just take a p is equal to 2 p not 2 p plus 2 which was the optimal one. So, a p is equal to 2 p will give you this series. This is a series mentioned in Yukti Bhasha and Yukti Deepika. Yukti Deepika is Shankaravarya's commentary on Tantra Sangraha. Kriya Kramakari is Shankaravarya's commentary on Leelavati. Both of them contain Sanskrit verses attributed to Madhava. Not only does it give this series, it also gives you a correction term in the end. So, this is another example where an end correction term is also mentioned. <coughs> so, these are the transformed series of Madhava. Uh, so, with this we come to an end of Madhavas work on Paridhi Vyasa Sambandha, the relation between circumference and the diameter. So, let us review where does all this work stand in the history of mathematics. So, we should take a quick look at history of pi. <coughs> so, the Rind Papyrus <coughs> and the Babylon, they have values of this order 3.16, 3.0. Shulva Sutras we saw had 3.08. There is a slightly better, better value in Madhava, Manava Shulva Sutra. Jaina text adopted square root of 10. Archimedes gave this inequality. <coughs> Ptolemy had this recurring decimal 
6666, he worked in sexagesimal uh, uh, place value system. The Chinese are supposed to have discovered 355 by 113, the next sort of uh, rational approximation after 22 by 7. This 355 by 113 is really very good, it is good to 6 decimal places. Now, the method adopted is uh, this, uh, what I mean by polygon doubling is essentially either you take a hexagon inscribed and a hexagon circumscribing a circle and go on converting into a 12 sided figure, 24 sided figure or you take a square inscribed and a square circumscribed go on doubling into octagon etcetera. So, as you can see for even for Ptolemy's value it is estimated that you need to have 6 steps and it is 384 sides uh, polygon you have to consider. To get the Aryabhata value you need to take uh, 4 steps from an octagon, 1024 sides are needed to get the Aryabhata value. Now, till the time of Aryabhata there were no good algorithm to even make this calculation. You should remember that this uh, polygon doubling method essentially involves using right angle triangle arguments which involves calculating square roots of quantities. And till Aryabhata's algorithm for the square root was available, square root had to be calculated with much greater difficulty. So, once Aryabhata's algorithm for square root was available, it was only a matter of the amount of effort that you put in to go on calculating polygons of higher and higher order to approximate the square the circle. So, as you can see between Aryabhata, there is really between this Chinese value and around the same time Aryabhata, there is really no great improvement till you come to this great mathematician called Al-Kashi who was in the West Asia, Samarkand. <coughs> he did 6 into 2 to the power 27 sites, he was a very great uh, calculator Al-Kashi and he obtained uh, pi to 16 decimal places and Madhava obtained this 11 decimal places. Of course, he had an infinite series with end corrections for doing so. Vate polygon doubling. 2 to the power 16 sites, Romanus again and one Kulen I think is supposed to have filled a whole book with his calculation 32 decimal places. <coughs> and Isaac Newton came up with an infinite series, this was I think during those uh, 4 5 years when he was away from Cambridge uh, due to plague or whatever. So, he came up with this uh, a, a different infinite series, we will see it in a minute. So, these are the results for pi. Now, uh, later on Abraham Sharp as we saw he had this tan inverse 1 by root 3 series. So, he calculated it to 71 and later on a very different kind of formula came due to John Machin. Uh, this was calculated to 100 places. Now, from here to I am going to 17 million there are so many in between steps many many great people come in between, but this is what is of interest to us. There is a result of Ramanujan in 1914 which was used by Gosper in 1985 to calculate pi to 17 million which was a record at that time using what is called a modular equation and around I mean around our times in the last couple of years I think we are around 5 trillion decimal places of pi. <coughs> so, exact results for pi the first one is of course, Madhavas and he had so many of them many 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 results. Vyate had this infinite product, Wallis also had another infinite product. Brownker had this uh, continued traction, Newton had this infinite series, he only estimated first few terms, he inverted uh, some other series and obtained this. Even the sin series and cos series, Newton evaluated a few terms and then said the other terms are also going to be similar. Gregory's uh, 10 verse x, Leibniz 5 by 4, Abraham Sharp, John Machin and this is the modular equation given by Ramanujan in a paper in 1914. <coughs> so, I am here I am displaying an extract from the collected works of Ramanujan the way the equations appear. So, this was a paper in which appeared in quarterly journal of mathematics in 1914. Uh, so, this was published after Ramanujan went to England, but it is said to contain much of his older work only. And uh, he gave about 50, 60 series in that paper and he says that this is one of the good series. Uh, it gives each term in the series gives 8 decimal places of pi accurately and in fact, in 1980s this series was used for a determining entirely new kind of algorithm for obtaining pi. 
So, with this the Paridhi Vyasa discussion we can finish. Now, we come to the other major work of Madhava which is establishing the sin series, cosine series and calculation of the sin table. <coughs> so, when you have an arc, if B C is an arc, C D is its bhuja, bhujajya, D O is its koti, kotijya and D E is its shara. These are the three quantities. So, the jya, koti and shara are functions of the arc. Now, the arc is measured in terms of minutes or in radian measure whichever way you want. So, the shara is called versine, it is 1 minus r into 1 minus cosine, koti is r into cosine, j is r into sine. Now, uh, we had this Aryabhatta relation to which I am again coming back and explaining to you the kind of refinement Nilakantha made of the Aryabhatta relation to enable the calculation of sine values accurately. So, the idea is the way Nilakanta arrived at that refinement, I am just trying to explain to you. Uh, you take the arc, so the arc is something E s or wherever, divide it into n equal arc bits. So, the same thing will be later on useful in considering the proof of Madhava's proof of the sign series also as given in Yukti Bhasha. So, whatever arc you have, divide it into n bits and then the jth and the uh, bhuja the jth koti and the jth shara can be defined. So, c i c j c j plus 1 is the jth arc bit in the when you are dividing the whatever given arc which may be here into n arc bits, this is the jth arc bit each of them are of equal length. You think of a midpoint for that, you think of the midpoint of the previous one. So, b j is the bhuja here this is the koti k j and this will be the shara. So, c j p j, c j p j is the bhuja, c j t j is the koti, c j p j is the bhuja, I am sorry, c j t j is the koti and this uh, q j plus uh, p j e is the shara. Okay. Now, these b j s, k j s and uh, uh, are also called pinda jas, pinda kotis, pinda sharats. Pinda means gross or uh, for a lump, lump of that jas at in between points are the desired points, these are the tabular jaws or whatever the lump. Now, the jas and cotis at the midpoint m j plus 1 and m i, we can denote them by b j plus half, s j plus half, b j minus half, s j minus half. So, same standard notation and all that you will need is there are so many perpendicular lines coming this way, coming that way and just these two radii. So, so many similar triangles will be formed. So, you choose the two appropriate similar triangles and you will get relations. So, the b j minus b j plus 1 minus b j, okay, what is this alpha? Alpha is the called length of c j c j plus 1. c j c j plus 1 itself is s by n, where s is the total arc, it is divided into n equal bits. So, c j c j plus 1 arc is s by n, the alpha is the card. So, this one, this card associated that is the alpha c j c j plus 1 e c s by n alpha is the associated card. So, you will get b j plus 1 minus b j is alpha by r the koti at the midpoint and the difference of the koti will be the bhuja at the midpoint and you couple both the equation you get this equation for the second order sign difference. So, that is the essential derivation of uh, Aryabhatta relation given in the Aryabhatiya Bhashya of Nilakanta Somayaji. <coughs> so, the sign difference, one minute, b j plus 1 minus b j is related to the koti at the mid, koti jya at the midpoint. The difference of the koti jyas or the difference of the sharas is equal to the bhuja jya at the midpoint. Combining the two, the second order sign difference is alpha by r whole squared into b j. And if you put uh, j is equal to 0, the same thing will be this, therefore, this can be related to delta 1 minus delta 2. You had a question? So, the question is, why do you choose the pinda jya? Is it because 
No, 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 no. This is to give you a handle on how to calculate sine at any point. You are taking a given arc, dividing it into n, n small bits, and each of them uh, from the start to the end of each arc bit, you call it a pindajya. That is all. But you are interested because you are, you are interested in a, 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 a sign of an arc, large arc, which you have divided into, into n arc bits. So, it is a uh, Later on when we discuss the proof of this, we will, uh, I think I will be going into the proof of this, then I will tell you why this is being done. Even for the Parijji Vyasa Samandha, you are dividing the arc into n bits, this is the same way. In fact, we need not have gone through this n bits, it is just the fact that I have a transparency which has the same diagram. We could have thought of each of these units as 225 uh, minutes, not as s by n. The same relation will hold the sign differences are proportional to the sign at bj, the second order sign differences. First order sign differences related to the cosine and the first order cosine differences are related to the sign and that is about all. Now, what Aryabhata did was to use this equation with the following two approximation, delta 1 minus delta 2 as 1 minute and b 1 as 225 minutes. So, b 1 is the first arc bit which was of length 225 the corresponding sign was equated to the arc in the first approximation, sin theta being taken nearly equal to theta for a small theta. So, Aryabhata made this approximation. So, with that he obtained a sign table, you want we, we have seen that sign table earlier, but let us see. So, Aryabhata's sign for 225 minutes is 225 itself, the first sign difference is 224 minutes, the second sign difference is 2. 22 minutes, third sign difference is 219 minutes, like that it goes. Now, what does Nilakantha do? He derives this equation, which is exact. Now, you have to do calculations with it, so as to give you approximations, and he will give you approximations which are better than what Aryabhata gave, so that you get better results. So, Nilakantha's approximation is sin of 225 minutes, take it as 224 minutes 50 seconds. And this ratio, the first sign difference by the first sign, you take it as 233 minutes 30 seconds. What would this have been in Aryabhata? This is 1 over 225 itself. Delta 1 minus delta 2 is 1, B 1 is 225. So, this would have been taken as 1 by 225 by Aryabhata. Nilakanta is giving a slightly better value. Shankara Varyar in his commentary on Tantra Sangraha has given a still better approximation. B 1 is 224 minutes. 50 seconds and 22 thirds and this ratio is 1 over 233 minutes 32 seconds. So, you use this in this equation, then you have already you know b 1 and you know this ratio also. You can use immediately, you can use this immediately to calculate the sign difference from that the next b, next sign difference, next b like that you can calculate b 1, b 2, b 3 x. This is the difference method that Aryabhata gave, only Nilakanta has given you better approximation, he has refined the Aryabhata's relation for second order sign difference. He derived it in Aryabhatiya Bhashya, he derived the exact form of it, but it is understood that Aryabhata himself had it somewhat along these lines only and uh, improved upon Aryabhata's. Essentially in today's notation, this is the j plus 1 sign difference, this is the j sign difference that is proportional to the jth sign divided by a certain quantity, which depends on the arc bit h. And it is this quantity, which is being approximated here successively. Okay, now, we will go to the sign series given by Madhava. So, I had just described Nilakantha's refinement of Aryabhata's uh, second order sign difference relation. Now, we go to the infinite series that sign for sign that Madhava gave. So, this is the verse, Nihatya chapa vargena chapam tat tat phalani cha haret samula yug vargaihi trijya varga hataihi kramat chapam phalani cha dhodo nesyo par yuparitya jet jiva aptyai sangraho asyaiva vidyan ityadina krataha. So, this is your arc, square of the arc by radius, samula yug varga. So, 2 square plus 2 2 square plus 2 into 4 square plus 4, etcetera, etcetera. You can convert that into 3 factorial, 5 factorial, 
7 factorial etcetera. So, it is the well known sign series and in the end he says that this the same series is summarized by what is called Vidwan etcetera. We will say what it is in a minute. Then Madhava has given another set of verses for the verse sign or the shara that is 1 minus cos. So, what is the verse sign series? So, cos x is 1 minus x squared by 2 factorial plus x 4 by 4 factorial etcetera. So, 1 minus cos x which is verse sign x. So, this is equal to x squared by 2 factorial minus x 4 by 4 factorial plus x right. So, this is the series Madhava is giving. Nihatya chapa vargena rupam tatat phalanicha. So, the verse is very symmetric. Nihatya chapa vargena chapam tatat phalanicha. Nihatya chapa vargena rupam tatat phalanicha. Haret vimula yug vargahi trijya vargahate kramat. So, the same kind of thing. And ultimately, that will lead to this series for the verse. So, in the end, Madhava says, Sharaptyahi Sangraho Asyaiva Stena Stritya Krita. So, this whole series is to be obtained to get the Shara or the R verse sign. And the same thing has been summarized in Stena Stri, etc. So, what is this Vidwan? What is this Stena, etc.? This will be explained in another lecture on sign table uh, that will come later. So, basically Madhava not only gave the series, he also gave a set of mnemonics by which you calculate the first few terms of the series. So, using this mnemonic for the first few terms of the series, you can calculate any sign or any verse sign for any angle to a given level of accuracy. So, this Vidwan, Tunna Balaha, Kavisha, Nichaya, Astenaha, Sri Pishunaha, etcetera, these are the mnemonics for the first few coefficients of the R sign series and the R verse sign series. From that you can calculate the sign and verse sign for any angle that any arc that you want uh, to a particular level of accuracy. So, Madhava always couples a, an exact result with a, an approximate way of calculation. He gave the pi series and then the same set of verses he gave you the first correction term also. In the same way he gave the sine and cosine series. At the same time he mentions that this can be quickly approximated by using Vidwan and the Tunnabala, the kind of mnemonics. So, Madhava also listed the 24 tabular R signs. What are these 24 tabular R signs for 225 minutes, 450 minutes, 675 minutes for which Aryabhata had given the sign table. So, those are collected in a set of verses which start with Shreshtam, Nama, Varishthana, etc., a set of verses which are quoted in various commentaries, Laghu Vibhruti of uh, Shankaravarya, Rantantra, Sangraha. So, they coincide with the modern values up to the third. So, this is the sign table of Aryabhata, which was improved upon by Govinda Swami, which is further improved upon by Madhava. So, this is in minutes, this is in seconds, this is in thirds. So, up to thirds, it will coincide with the modern values that we know for sign. So, if you think of it in decimal terms, it is accurate up to 7, 8 decimal places, sign table. So, this is the sign table for 24 R signs given by Madhava. Now, we will finally go into a topic uh, which was the question of the instantaneous velocity. What was the kind of uh, improvement that was done by the Kerala astronomers to what Bhaskara had done earlier. So, Bhaskara had used the equation of center in the simplest form, but the actual equation of center is something like this. It is sin inverse of or sin of the anomaly. This is the mean value this is the apogee and these are the coefficients, this is the mean epicycle, this is the mean longitude. So, this is the anomaly, the difference between the mean lo uh, uh, longitude and the aphelion or the apogee depending on the object for which you are writing the equation of center. Now, when this angle, when this anomaly is small, you can uh, rewrite the sign as angle itself. So, the whole thing becomes much simpler, but Nilakantha or you can rewrite the sign inverse as x itself. So, the equation of center looks much simple, it is just a sine term, but the actual thing is a sine inverse function of the sine of anomaly that you have to consider. This m is the time dependent quantity here. So, when you calculate the velocity, you should differentiate this with respect to this time dependent quantity. So, what is involved is the derivative of 
the sin inverse function is what will appear and Nilakantha in his formula for the instantaneous velocity obtain the derivative of the sin inverse function that is something of what we all know. So, this equivalent of this is what we obtain. So, this occurs No, no, the equation of center itself will take you from the uniform circular motion to non uniform motion. So, it is equivalent to moving in an elliptical orbit which will also give you a non uniform angular motion. So, to the first order in eccentricity the equation of center will mimic the elliptical orbit. So, in the elliptical orbit also you say that the area law of Kepler will tell you when you are close to the aphelion the thing will move faster when you are far away it will move slower. So, it is the same kind of thing that so for small eccentricity this equation of center is as good as working with a ellipse. The other aspect of the ellipse is the distance which we were not uh, considering at all one is only working about the angular motion you are looking at the stellar object the planet in relation in the background of stars and uh, the actual distance of the planet is a different kind of an issue. So, in Tantra Sangraha Nilakantha has quoted this verse Chandra Bahu Phala Varga Shodhita Trijeka Kriti Pradena Samhare. So, this is basically the 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared that is characteristic of the sin inverse x. And he says specifically this should be done for the case of moon, but one should do it for sun also if need be. So, in terms of the formula, so if we take this is the equation of center, this was the equation of center that Nilakanta was considering and the derivative that he has obtained is something like this. <coughs> Nilakanta in his Aryabhatiya Bhashya has tried to give some explanation, but this is not really the kind of explanation that uh, we would like to know for the derivative of a sin inverse function today, but he has tried to explain how this term 1 by square root of 1 minus x squared comes. This verse Nilakanta actually in Jyotir Mimamsa, he explains that this verse is actually due to Damodara. So, it is not his discovery, it is his due to his teacher Damodara who is the son of Parameshwara. <coughs> now, Achyuta Bisharati in Sputa Nirnaya Tantra, he has given the derivative of the ratio of two functions. He constructs the equation of center by he of course, gives Nilakanta's result of sin derivative of sin inverse of x. He also constructs uh, the derivative for a another model of planetary motion. Uh, this model of uh, uh, equation of center is due to Munjala given in Lagumanasa. It involves the a variable denominator here which is depending on the anomaly. So, that uh, m is the function of time here. So, derivative of this will involve knowing the derivative of ratio of two functions and again Achyuta Bisharati is able to construct the derivative in the same way that we use today. <coughs> so, in terms of the work of Kerala school there are perhaps other things also. We have only analyzed two, three books. We have analyzed what the results as derived in Yukti Bhasha. We have analyzed the results as given in Tantra Sangraha and its commentaries uh, Laghu Vivrati and uh, Yukti Deepika. We have analyzed Nilakantha's discussion in Aryabhatiya Bhashya, but th there are many other works of Kerala astronomy. We do not know what other kind of mathematical developments were uh, or encoded in them or worked out by them. Perhaps there may not be many more or perhaps there are a lot more we cannot say right now, but uh, what has been done is fairly substantial. So, they start with <coughs> the infinite series for pi and various uh, approximations by end correction terms, transformed series uh, something similar to continued fractions also. Then we have the infinite series for the sine and cosine functions, then approximations for calculating them, then the notion of instantaneous velocity and 
its implications in astronomy. So, many many aspects of infinitesimal calculus are there in the work of the Kerala astronomers. I have tried to summarize some of those that we have seen in these various books. <coughs> the proofs of this we will discuss uh, perhaps in the next and the last lecture on to some of these proofs will be discussed as given in Yukti Bhasha. So, in some sense they, these results will be repeated once more again and again by discussing their proofs. So, this Ganita Yukti Bhasha as I said was first published in 1948 and around the same time uh, a series of articles by C. T. Rajagopal and his collaborators appeared which discussed the proofs in Yukti Bhasha. Then this English translation by K. V. Sharma and uh, notes. This Kriya Kramakari was edited by K. V. Sharma in 1975. Tantra Sangra with Yukti Deepika as edited by K. V. Sharma in 1977 and a new edition in English translation uh, with a detailed notes by Professor Sriram and Ram Subramaniam appeared in 2010. This is a good summary in English of uh, Kerala mathematics. It is a summary of uh, uh, the work in Yukti, the discussions in Yukti Bhasha. Raju's book is a detailed discussion of the mathematical foundations of calculus in India and his own hypothesis that uh, this was uh, exported to Europe basically by the Jesuit missionaries sometime during 15th, 16th century. Since the argument for uh, transmission normally has been made is one of priority. So, the Greeks had discovered something, they had the epicycle model by the time of Ptolemy or by the time of Apollonius and Aryabhata is considering epicycle model in 499. So, this was transmitted to India. So, if you want now you can reverse this kind of argument and say Bhaskara had the Chakravala equation in, 19, in 1150 and Fermat is considering the same thing in 1650 or uh, Nilakantha and Yukti Bhasha they have all these uh, interesting results on calculus in around 1500 and they are being rediscovered in 1650-1670. So, priority is an argument in uh, uh, for cultural transmission uh, and not really textual evidence for uh, works being taken away, translated or studied, then this is good enough argument. This is in summary what Raju is trying to say, many, many more things he is trying to say. George Joseph is another person who has popularized the study of uh, Kerala mathematics through several books. Uh, Berger and Borwein is a uh, detailed uh, history of pi uh, in various cultures and civilizations. Borwein and Borwein are one of those people who have specialized in fast, uh, computing, fast computing algorithms for Ramanujan. There are several papers on Ramanujan by them also. So, with this uh, we stop our brief introduction to calculus in Kerala mathematics. Thank you.